In this video, we will perform a discrete size optimization using Hypermesh and Optistruct. Size optimization is used to automatically determine the wall thicknesses of sheet metal and similar hollow circular components to satisfy given design parameters. We will perform discrete size optimization on a suspension link to determine the ideal wall thicknesses for each section of the part. The objective will be to maximize the stiffness at minimum weight. Let's get right into it. The link for the CAD model used in this video is provided in the description. Feel free to download the CAD and follow this video step by step to get a clear understanding of the overall optimization setup. The first step is to create a linear static analysis with given boundary conditions and loads. This linear static analysis will be used as a base case to set up the optimization in the next step. Let's start by separating the part into different sections and assigning a material and thickness to each section. Once the geometry is imported in Hypermesh, one component is seen in the model browser. We will split this geometry into multiple components. Let's start by renaming this first component. Create a new component and provide a name to it. Create two more components and provide appropriate names. Let's change the color of these components for better visualization. Now open the Organize tool from Tools panel. Switch the Entity selector to Surfaces. We will manually select these surfaces connected to each other. Select the Main Links component and move the selected surfaces. Similarly, let's select these central surfaces. We will move these surfaces to the cross links component. Lastly, select these shock absorber mounting links. We will move these to the mount component. All the surfaces have now been separated into respective components. We can start with the material and property assignment. Create a new material. With card image as mat1, we will define a linear isotropic material and assign the mechanical properties of aluminum. Create a new property and enter a name for it. With card image as P shell, select the aluminum material in selection box. Let's use thickness value as 1.2 mm. We will duplicate this property for all other components. This means that initially all the components will have same element thickness of 1.2 mm. Let's change the colors of these property for better visualization. Now we will assign these properties to the respective components. As you can see, the material gets assigned automatically. With this, the material and property assignment for all components is done. We can now start with the analysis setup. Open the Automesh tab from 2D panel. Select all the surfaces in Entity Selector box. Let's use element size as 5. Mesh all the components. Click on Shaded Elements option to view the mesh properly. Now we can hide the geometry as it is no longer required. Create a new component to store RBE2 rigid elements. 
Let's change the color of this component. Open the Rigids tab from 1D panel. Switch dependent node to multiple nodes and independent node to calculate node. Switch the selector to loops. We will create a rigid element at this pin joint location. Do the same for the second location. We will define the shock absorber mounting point by creating a rigid. Lastly, create a rigid at knuckle mounting location. Create a new load collector to store single point constraints. Open the constraints tab from analysis panel. We will select these two pin joint locations. These points will be constrained for all three translational degrees of freedom. Create the constraints. Now select the shock absorber mounting point. We will restrict translation along Y axis for this node. Create the constraint. Now create a new load collector for force. Open the forces tab. Let's select this pin joint location. We will apply a force of magnitude 2000 Newton in positive Y direction. Create the force. To couple these loads and constraints, create a new load step. Set analysis type as linear static. Now select the SPC load collector in SPC field. Select the force load collector in load field. The analysis setup is now complete. Let's save the model in a separate folder. Make sure to use underscore in place of space while entering all file names to avoid any errors during the analysis run. Open the Optistruct tab from Analysis panel. Set Export options to All and Run options to Analysis. Click on Optistruct to launch the solver. Once the analysis is complete, we can view the results in Hyperview. Open the Contours tab and apply the deformation results. We can change the numeric format of the legend as desired. There is a maximum deformation of 5.6 mm. Set result type as element stresses. With averaging method as simple, apply the stress results. A peak stress value of 319 MPa is observed. This is beyond the yield limit of our material. We can clearly see that the part is failing under applied boundary conditions. Now we will improve the design using discrete size optimization. The optimization setup involves the creation of design variables, responses, constraints and objective function. Let's take a look at how this is done. Let's start by creating a copy of this model in a separate folder. Open the optimization tab. We will start by creating a list of discrete thickness values which can be used in the optimization. Enter a name for the first list. 
Let's define a range from 0.8 to 2.4 mm in increments of 0.2 mm. Create the discrete design value. With the same settings, enter a different name and create another list. We will create a discrete design value list for each component in the model. Now open the size option. Provide a name for this design variable. Let's set the initial value to 1.2 mm. Enter the upper and lower bounds as specified in the discrete design values. Keep the button on move limit default. Now select the corresponding discrete design value in selection box. Create the design variable. With the same settings, we will create a design variable for each component. Make sure to assign the corresponding discrete design values for all variables. Now switch the radio button to generic relationship. Enter a name and select the first property. Select the corresponding design variable. Create the relationship. Similarly, we will create a relationship for every component. By doing this, we are linking the design variables to respective property thicknesses. The solver will be able to modify these thicknesses using the discrete design value lists. This is the crux of size optimization process. Now we will create responses for this optimization. Let's create a mass response. Enter a name and create this first response. As we are interested in reducing the stress, create a static stress response type. Select all the properties in selection box. Switch the drop down to both surfaces and create the second response. Open the deconstraints tab. We will set the upper bound of stress value at 250 MPa. Select the stress response. Now assign the analysis load step. Create the constraint. Lastly, we will now define the objective for this optimization. Our goal is to keep the total mass as low as possible. Select the mass response in selection box and create the objective. The optimization setup is now complete. Let's save the model. Set run options to optimization and click on Optistruct to launch the solver. This may take some time to solve. The optimization has converged and a feasible design has been achieved. Let's view the results in Hyperview. We will split the graphics window in two parts to view the size change and corresponding stress results simultaneously. Load the s1.h3d file in second window. Apply the results. 
let's synchronize the two windows in the first window apply the element thickness results for first iteration let's switch to fixed numeric format Apply the corresponding displacement results in second window. Now switch the results to elemental stresses. We can see the initial stress value of 319 megapascal. Now switch to the last iteration. We can see the change in thickness for different components in the model. Apply the stress results. As you can see, the maximum stress value is now reduced to 222 megapascal. This is below the yield limit. Hence, our part will not fail under applied loads. We have successfully performed size optimization to determine the optimal thickness values for each component. We can also get the optimum thickness values from the output file for this analysis. Open the output file using any text editor. At the end of this file, there is a design property items table. In this, we can see the optimum thickness values for each property have been listed. We can refer these thickness values to redesign our part in a better way. And this is how we can perform discrete size optimization using Hypermesh and Optistruct. If you like this video, please hit the red subscribe button and give a thumbs up, it helps a lot. Make sure to follow me on social media to stay updated about latest video content. Thanks for watching.